Nani, vai embora, vai fugir Nani, vai por com os olhos do adversário. Parou, Nani, vê que tem a moeda, vê que tem João Praia, fugiu João Praia, vai cruzar, cruzamento, não! edition of the Portugal Portuguese Football Show. Uh, this is brought to you by the team at www.portugal.net and today we have a special show, just one item on the menu. Yep, it's the classical. Benfica against Porto on Sunday. It's one of the most eagerly awaited classicals in many a year. So we'll be discussing that in depth all throughout the show. So without further ado, let me introduce the panel to you. Uh, first up, He's here in Portugal, like me, only he is about 400 kilometers to the north of where I'm sitting at this moment. It's Vasco Mota Pereira. Vasco, uh, bom ano, my friend. <laughs> Obrigado, Tom. Bom ano para ti também. <laughs> okay, cheers. Uh, the second panelist and the second country, uh, we're off to Germany. And uh, waiting for us to, to speak to us there is Nathan Motz. Hi there, Nathan. How are you doing? Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Uh, thanks for having me again. Okay, thanks for turning up. Okay, and now we're going to take a swim all the way over the Atlantic. See, we're very athletic guys, us lot. And we're going to say hello to two Toronto dwellers who, as luck would have it, it are, one of them is an avid Porto fan and the other one is an avid Benfica fan. So they're just the people to have on today's show. First of all, our expert for all things Porto, Victor Ferreira. Hi there, Victor. How are you doing? Good, Tom. Glad to be back. Okay, good stuff. And Orlando Machado. Hi there, Orlando. How's it going? Ah, unmute yourself, Orlando. <laughs> there we go. Uh, sorry, representing Benfica. Stomach flu, still here. Ah, that's dedication for you. That's dedication. <laughs> Okay, so Sunday night, 8.15, all attentions in Portugal will be on the Estadio de Luz in the Portuguese capital. Uh, like I mentioned, both Benfica and Porto uh, have been in really fantastic form this season. It really makes for what should be a superb game. Uh, they've, both of them have dropped only four points all season, and that was right at the start of the season. Uh, since the end of September, they've won every single league game they've played. So they go into this uh, into the match really, you know, in blistering form. Both teams. Uh, Vasco, uh, Benfica particularly have been in uh, really sparkling form of late, scoring goal after goal after goal. Uh, even Kardec scored yesterday. <laughs> so <laughs> it's an indication of uh, that everything's going right for them. So. Uh, my question for you is, I've got a couple of questions actually, just to get the ball rolling. First of all, do you think this Benfica side is possibly the best Benfica side since 2009-10 when they won the championship? And also, uh, can Porto stop Benfica scoring in this game? Uh, well, Tom, I think you might be right on, on that. Uh, the first question, the 2009-10 Benfica really steamrolled the opposition basically wherever they played, and they scored almost at will, uh, like it's happening now. I actually think this Benfica team are spoiled for choice up front, with a lot of very good players for every attacking position, basically. And while there's no Ramirez or Di Maria, for instance, there are seemingly more options, with the additions of André Almeida and André Gomes, uh, plus Bruno Cesar and Kardec, for instance, who haven't been playing all that often, but who are still better players, in my opinion, than Carlos Martins, uh, Felipe Nez, Weld, and... and the likes. As for your second question, uh, to be honest, no, I don't think Porto are capable of keeping Benfica from scoring. Benfica are, as we all know, quite strong at home. Uh, however, I don't think Benfica are capable of keeping Porto from scoring either, even without James Rodriguez. Their gang-ho approach makes them all the more enjoyable to watch, but sometimes leaves them, leaves them quite vulnerable, particularly in big matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. 
if your appetite isn't whetted for the game now after <laughs> hearing that, I'm sure it will be. I think I agree with uh, with Vasco entirely. Uh, there should be goals in this one. Uh, Nathan, uh, Vasco just alluded to it there that uh, you know Benfica have this gung ho approach, which everyone loves watching. It's just all about goals and attacking for them. Porto have been very impressive this season, but uh, I think you can argue probably uh, quite a different style, uh, maybe more well balanced, or certainly more solid defensively. You would you would think. Uh, I've got a question for you. Uh, of course, as we all know, Porto have dominated so much over the years. Uh, one example of that is in the last 11 visits to the Stadio de Luz, they've only actually lost twice. Uh, my question to you, does this domination give Porto a, a big psychological advantage going into this match? And, uh, and how do you explain this uh, kind of a psychological advantage and mental strength which Porto always seem to bring to the big games? Well, I'm not an expert on either Porto or Benfica, but I think uh, one of the things about Porto that um, has given them their strength, like you mentioned, is, is that psychological edge, and that's coaching uh, partially. Uh, so a lot of that has to go down, uh, be credited to, to the manager. Um, but, I, but I think they do have a, they have a core of players there that, that really understand their roles and, and know how to execute kind of the, the, the Porto game plan, which really hasn't varied too much over the years. Um, uh, they they practice you know more of a form of uh, complete football than I would say Benfica do, uh, focusing a lot more on on control of the ball and and, and defensive strength um, than just you know haphazardly attacking, um, which is not a knock on Benfica because they attack really well. And I think they're going to give Porto a lot of problems in this game. Um, I don't know if the the domination that they've had over the years is going to be a psychological edge or not. Um, looking at where these teams are at on the table, you know having having uh, not been beaten at all, um, and the fact this is their first meeting in the season, I, I think both of them would, would be content with the draw at this point. Um, so I'm not sure if there's going to be any psychological edge there or not. I do know that uh, the, the return match at the end of the season is going to be in Porto, so I think you, you could argue that that actually places a lot more uh, pressure on, uh, on Benefica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And also, we have to remember that that return match in Porto is the penultimate game of the season. So, you know, it's, if, it, if it's really so close as it is now, it's going to be very important for Benfica to try and go up there with a, with a bit of an advantage. Uh, OK, uh, Victor, uh, turning to you, our Porto expert. Uh, one thing which may possibly be quite a big factor in this game is the fact that Benfica are at full strength. Uh, you know, they've got lots of options, even their substitutes, like I mentioned before, uh, seem to be coming in and doing a good job. Uh, Porto, on the other hand, have got some uh, big absentees, of course, none bigger than uh, Hamas Rodriguez, uh, who was ruled out after being injured last week against Nacional. Uh, also, Mike Conn, we're not quite sure if he's going to play yet, and if he does, how fit he'll be, because uh, he's been out for uh, several months now. And of course, Atsu uh, and uh, Atsu is at the African Nations Cup with Ghana, and Kleber uh, is unavailable. Also, is also unfit. Uh, how much of a, a factor do you think these absentees will be for Porto? Well, like you mentioned, Benfica has a wealth of depth, and right now Porto has none. Um, they barely have enough depth to even play in the 4-3-3. Uh, which I'm really um, interested in, uh, to see if uh, Vitor Pereira sticks to the 4-3-3 uh, because of the absence of Atsu, James, and Kleber. Um, Porto are left with really only Varela and Jackson up front. And I guess you can count Ismailov in there, but do we expect VP to start Ismailov in his first game? Probably not. Do we expect VP to go with Kelvin? Uh, an inexperienced uh, forward? Probably not. So, um, you know, we're going to see, in my opinion, um, some interesting tactical innovations from from uh, VP, which will probably end up costing Porto the game. Uh, I was thinking about it earlier on, scratching my head, really, because Porto has no options whatsoever up front. And uh, it looks like right now, what VP is most likely to do is place Danilo up on the wing and Mykon at right back, which 
it's always a controversial uh, decision uh, between Porto fans, but VP seems to to think it's a great one. Really, that's all I can see them doing unless they switch to a four four two. Regardless, though, the lack of the, of depth probably will cost them. I would say at full strength, uh, either team had a chance for had a chance for victory. Right now, Porto can uh, probably be hoping for a draw at most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it's possibly one of the first Benfica Porto games I can remember in a long time where I think the majority of people will probably make Benfica favourites. So, uh, of course, uh, that doesn't mean they're going to win. Uh, that's again something which makes this match, uh, you know, extra interesting. Uh, Orlando, uh, you've talked to us several times about uh, your, uh, you know, how uh, you think that. Cardozo is uh, such a great player, and I think I agree with you, and he's uh, been proven that the last few weeks, scoring goal after goal. Uh, I'd like to ask you today about uh, the other side of the pitch. Uh, Benfica, of course, have this uh, ultra-attacking approach, uh, but that does sometimes leave them a little bit vulnerable at the back. Uh, George Jesus has gone for two strikers in uh, most of his recent games, with uh, Salvio and uh, Ola John, or Gaetan. Uh, Gaitan also on the wings, you know, that often translates into something like a 4-2-4 a four, four. and with uh, just two kind of uh, holding midfielders or midfielders with more defensive concerns, you can say, in the middle of the of the pitch and also the fact that Louisan uh, may not be fit either or uh, may not play or if he does play, may not be 100% fit. Uh, do you think that might make Benfica a bit vulnerable at the back? Uh, Tom, I think you're being kind as usual. Uh, JJ's Benfica is more like a 2 2 6 with uh, Malgorek <laughs> and Maxi at, acting as strikers uh, or wingers, anyways. Um, but many people complain about the midfield of um, Benfica, but I think uh, with Matic, Enzo, or even Gomes or Almeida, if you have those two, any of those two in the middle, I think we're pretty good. Uh, they're they're really good ball winners, and they make very clever passes. Uh, as for the defense itself, um, I'm hoping to have Louis, uh, Louisan out there, and if we can get Gray out there, I'm quite happy. Uh, I think uh, we'll be able to control Port, Porto, and uh, I think we'll be able to do good. Uh, as for Jardel, I, I like him, but he just doesn't have that foot speed for, you know, when you have an all uh, attack. Uh, Malgarego and Maxi have been neglecting their duties, uh, so I'm much happier with, say, Luizinho and Almeida, who are much better defenders. Uh, but we we all know they're not going to play. Uh, so I expect a shootout, you know, I and I think with our three capable strikers, I, I think we can outscore Porto in this one. I, I see it somewhere along the lines of 3-2 or 4-2 uh, mm -hmm. with us winning. Okay. Uh, uh, Vasco, uh, there's been a huge build-up, and of course uh, every day it's getting huger and huger here in Portugal. Uh, really, the sports papers aren't talking about anything else. Uh, both coaches, as so often happens, have been keen to downplay the fixture, trying to say... Uh, it's not decisive, you know, whoever wins this game uh, won't be champions necessarily. Uh, are they right? Uh, how important is this in terms of who will be the champions of Portugal this season? Uh, well, Tom, you, you kind of have to say it, right? It just goes with the territory. Both coaches are doing their best to take the pressure off their players. Fearing that too much too soon might ruin their chances. Um, to be honest, this has been one of the least demanding seasons for the big two. Not necessarily just because of weaker opposition, but also because they've been playing so well. The Portuguese situation has become a bit similar to the Spanish one, where you have two teams battling it out on their own, and, then, and therefore the two matches uh, between them are of great significance. Uh, despite what either coach may say, this match can be hugely important, in my opinion, it, because if Porto win, Benfica will find it very hard to shake it off after witnessing firsthand the development of the last couple of seasons, and I think it will probably change the momentum towards Porto. On the other hand, if Benfica win, Porto will be six points adrift, albeit with a game in hand, I know, 
And I think Benfica will definitely, uh, Porto will definitely start feeling the heat also because they don't have any other title to compete for. So yeah, I'm thinking this could be a very important match at the end of the day, to be in my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, uh, well, staying with you, Vasco, now. Uh, of course, you are our tactical expert on Portugal. And uh, I'd like to put you on the spot right now. Uh, what do you think are the key tactical factors that will uh, you know, decide who gets on top in this match? Uh, well, uh, I wouldn't like to ruin the surprise effect of our soon-to-be-published article, but <laughs> I think there's a few things worth pointing out, I think. Uh, firstly... Uh, how will Porto deal without James Rodriguez? Uh, will the four get the nod? Uh, if so, who will provide the creativity for Porto? Because I think it's a very important issue because suddenly Porto are deployed or devoid of creative players. And also with the four, Porto will have four midfielders against Benfica's two. Uh, will Benfica be overrun in the center? Because sometimes it looks like Benfica are deploying the WM formation from the mid-twenties at, at times. <laughs> um, <laughs> secondly, set pieces. Uh, despite uh, only having conceded six goals, Porto have often looked vulnerable in set pieces. In particular, corners and free kicks aimed at the near post for a flick towards the far post. I have been an issue all season long. Fortunately for Porto, it hasn't cost them too, too much, but uh, it's still a problem nonetheless. And as we all know, Benfica are huge in that part of the game, so sometimes a simple set piece ends up deciding an even match. Uh, thirdly, um, it's been said before, the bench. Porto now have a very, very short squad without Clever, Atsu, James, which means Kelvin is the only attacking option, uh, which might justify my love coming on sooner than expected. Uh, since Porto have no one in case they find themselves trailing. As for Benfica, it's unbelievable the wealth of options they have on the bench just waiting to come onto the pitch. Uh, Ola John, Rodrigo, Kardec, Nolito, all very good, good attack-minded players who can prove decisive in any given moment. And last but not least, and this one's a vodcast bonus, uh, Lima. He's not a striker, he's not a winger, but he's an all-around nuisance for every opponent. His ability to exploit the space between fullback and centre-back is one of the main reasons Mifik have been so prolific all season long. Against a team that plays as high as Porto, that might turn out even better for him. So that's my tactical preview, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I remember when Lima was bought, a lot of people kind of thought, uh, what have Benfica buying him for? You know, he's going to spend all his time on the bench, but uh, yeah. he, really, he really has proved to be a, a fantastic mm. signing for them. Not that uh, often on the bench. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Uh, okay. Uh, Nathan, I'd like to go back to you now. Uh, you spent a lot of time on the site. Uh, I just remind our viewers, that's www.portogoal.net. Uh, spent a lot of time on the site, Nathan, covering Real Madrid and uh, also the Portuguese in uh, Besiktas uh, when, they, when there was a whole slew of them over there. So you've seen, obviously, these uh, huge matches between uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid and you've seen these huge Istanbul derbies where, you know, the crowds are just uh, completely partisan and passionate. Uh, how do you think uh, the Porto Benfica games, Benfica Porto games? How do you think that they compare in terms of uh, intensity and in terms of uh, crowd participation? Well, if we're completely honest, I, I think it's it's difficult to compare uh, even even this match to, to to a Real Madrid Barcelona match. Um, just in terms of, of crowd intensity, uh, playing at a at a stadium like the Bernabeu or the Camp Nou. Um, is, is an unbelievable thing, and I think most people recognize that as, as, as one of the, the premier sporting events um, on, on the planet every year. We look forward to that Classico um, in, in so many ways more than, uh, more than anything as European football fans, but um, I, I would say definitely the Porto Benfica match compares to some of the matches I've, I've seen in Turkey, just an intensity you know, on the pitch. Uh, during the match and also in the stands, with the one exception, and that's that uh, I would say there's there's usually a, a more of a tendency for violence among the fans um, surrounding a match in Turkey, although uh, recently that has it has been a little bit more violent uh, in Portugal as well. Um, so uh, intensity is building. This match is going to be a, 
I think probably more of a uh, more exciting than than even the ones we've had in the last few seasons because I think Benfica really do have an edge in a lot of a lot of ways, like we've discussed with personnel, um, but, and especially uh, given the fact that they haven't won the league uh, last season. But I, I really think that uh, it's going to be a great match, and and certainly will uh, will be close to maybe exceeding the intensity for uh, for the Cla- the Clasico between Madrid and Barcelona this year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair comment. I think uh, I'd agree with you also on just touching on the violence aspect. Of course, a couple of years ago, I think, is maybe it's worst. It got at its worst here in Portugal. And I've seen it for a long time. Where there was this tendency to bring golf balls to these uh, matches, both the game in, in Dragao and the game here at the Luge. Uh, thankfully, last season or so, uh, that seems to have calmed down a little bit. But uh, yeah, these two sides, uh, I think it's fair to say there's a uh, no love lost between them and between their sets of fans. Uh, okay, uh, Victor, going back to the, the actual match now on the, on the field, as it were. Uh, as we've already said, Benfica are in a sensational form. Porto, uh, they're also in very good form in terms of results. Uh, but they are missing these players. Uh, I won't say it publicly, but do you think Vitor Pereira and his players... Uh, if they were given the chance to uh, to come out with a draw, do you think they'd be happy with that? Yeah, I definitely would. Well, not not so much happy because I'm sure they're never happy to uh, to lose out on an opportunity to uh, close the or close the gap between them and Benfica, even with the game in hand, uh, or to gain the edge even psychologically over Benfica. But at this point, with all the players missing. Uh, I mean, what more could they really ask for? They're argu- argu- arguably missing their uh, top player, their game changer in uh, James Rodriguez. Um, they have no attacking options off the bench, uh, unless you consider Kelvin one. If Mizmailov gets called up, he'd be another. Um, so really, yeah, I mean, uh, in my opinion, that's really the best Porto fans can hope for at this time. Uh, with the full squad, it would be a different story, but because we're so depleted at the present time, really a draw would be uh, would be a fortunate uh, event, I, I would say, to avoid uh, to avoid being outscored by Benfica, or <laughs> you know, just uh, just avoiding the loss in, in general would be would be great. So any way to do so, a draw, I take it. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I think that's the first time a Porto fan would say something like that in many years. But uh, I think uh, Victor is probably echoing the thoughts of most uh, Porto supporters. Uh, and uh, along that, along those lines, Orlando, do you think this is actually a big chance for Benfica? Do you think they could uh, possibly do something which they haven't done for, to Porto for a long, long time? Uh, beat them comprehensively, win by two or three goals. And if they did do that, do you think that could really send out a message? Uh, Benfica under Jorge Jesus, they've really been competing uh, much better in the last two or three seasons than, uh, than any time before, uh, consistently, uh, more or less on a par with Porto, although Porto have come out top the last two seasons. So do you think if Benfica came out, uh, you know, really, really put in a commanding performance, that might actually change the whole landscape a little bit of the Portuguese football in general and uh, maybe mark the end of Porto as the sole dominant force? Uh, I actually think uh, competing is a vague word. Uh, the fact JJ's record against Porto over the last uh, few seasons is 1-4-2. Uh, so really, th- that's not competitive. So consi- considering the squad depth we have, um, it's up to him. Uh, it really is. Uh, Befica is super strong. We have super depth. Um, it depends on his squad selection. Uh, no one ever knows what his squad lineup will be for the big games. Uh, but it looked like Ola John's out. Uh, it looked like he will be sitting after Gaetan had three good games. Um, and this type of favoritism, I think, is what gets JJ in trouble. Uh, Ola has been playing exceptionally. Uh, for so long, and he deserved this game. I don't think he's actually going to play. Uh, so don't get me wrong, Gaetan loves big games. He, you know, he usually shows up for those. Um, but his, his play against Easter Hill 
uh, in the first half, it was very lackluster until he hit that wonder goal. Um, he has a tendency to move to the middle uh, instead of staying on the left, and he doesn't play his role. Uh, only when they subbed in Lima, then you saw him actually move over to the left. Uh, I was hoping for a full Porto squad. I think um, with Porto missing some players, I think it actually affects both teams. Uh, unfortunately, Hamas being out uh, will actually put more pressure on Befica to win, uh, which I, you know, I don't think is a good thing. Um, It'll get some overconfident and others lazy, and you know uh, what we really need is for them to come out and play their game. Again, it depends on the formation that uh, JJ starts in the game. In the end, I feel the result all falls on JJ. Whether we win or lose will depend on him, and I'd love to cheer for him, uh, making some great decisions along the way that won us the game. Uh, but he has no excuses. Uh, he has the best squad he's ever had. He's got more depth than could uh, than we could imagine. Uh, the question is, will he use them wisely? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is the sixty-four million dollar question, I suppose. Uh, now, to end this uh, special classical podcast, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of asking for predictions, uh, I'm going to ask five questions to the panel. And uh, they will give their answers uh, with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And so the panel will give their judgment. Okay, first question is this. Uh, will Porto's lack of depth prove costly to them in this game? Thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> okay, that's pretty <laughs> unanimous there, yeah. Everyone seems to think that that is going to be a very big factor in this game. Uh, second question. Uh, will Jorge Jesus lose this game uh, by making a tactical mistake? No. There you go. We're all in unison again. Uh, he uh, seems to have learned from past mistakes, maybe. Uh, and uh, everyone thinks he'll get he'll get it right this time. Uh, okay, number three. How about this full question then? Will this be the best classico of all time? <laughs> there you go. You got three thumbs down, and Orlando put both of his up. So <laughs> three two. Uh, but uh, I think I'd agree myself there and think possibly not simply because uh, Porto aren't at full strength. If both sides were at full strength, maybe it could have been. Uh, okay, and uh, question number four. Will the winner of this match be the winner of the league title? Hmm, interesting. Yes, we have three people agreeing with that. Victor uh, is not so sure. Okay. I think that's one we'll have to revisit in later shows. Uh, finally, how many goals are there going to be in this game? If you think there's going to be more than five goals, uh, or five goals or more, give it a thumbs up. If you think there's going to be less than five goals, give it a thumbs down. Hmm, interesting. Again, panel are split on that one, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, in any event, uh, that's the end of our little preview show for uh, uh, Benfica against Porto match on Sunday. Don't forget, you can follow everything on www.portogol.net. Uh, also, uh, as a little add-on, uh, Orlando's been busy working away again. Uh, Orlando, tell us what you've got uh, for, for the viewers. Well, I thought it would be a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot of Portistas and sports and Benfica just get very serious about things. But really, I think uh, the whole event itself is something to celebrate, and it should be fun. So I created two puppets of uh, uh, Pinto da Costa and Luis Felipe Vieira, and instead of you know them just insulting each other, what I did was created a sort of comedy act where they were competing against each other. I hope you know it's funny enough for most 
most people or whatever. Uh, I think our serious show needs to be balanced with something that's a little more on the fun side. Okay, yep, and you can check that out by uh, just visiting the site. It's at the, be on the same page as the this podcast. Uh, thanks again for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, até o próximo. Aplausos, nosso carinho.